Welcome to Rockstar Productions, where in this episode we are going to check out the Nexago multifunction cooling stand designed for the PlayStation 5. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstar Productions, and before we get into this episode, I just want to take a second and thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me means a lot to my family and to this channel. If you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that we have here on the channel, including our full unboxing and initial setup of the PlayStation 5 and reviews of other Nexago products, including their controller charger stand that we have here too. And if you really like what you see here and if you wanna be kept up to date with everything we have going on, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification that way every time we upload new content or go live, you are kept the most informed and up to date. And behind me, God of War is available for PlayStation Plus members for the PS4 and PS5. I want to know, are you a fan of the series? I originally played God of War on the PSP and it was just like, holy crap, holy crap, look at the blood, oh my god, oh my god, this is so cool. Such a fun game. I've only just started playing God of War uh, for the PS4 on the PS5. They have introduced like higher frame rates, better graphics, things like that. A little slow but I'm liking what I'm playing so far. So let me know down in the comments, are you a fan of the God of War series? So the folks over at Nexago sent us this here. This is a multifunction cooling stand designed for the PlayStation 5. And by that, I mean it'll actually work with both the PS5 disc version, like what I have here, and you can also use it with the all digital edition. Now, I did recently check out, which I mentioned in the open, uh, the Nexago charging dock for the PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers. And it definitely had benefits over the Sony OEM one, but there's still a few things could be improved on this. Good start, I'd like to see some firmware updates to make this even better. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take it out of the box, we're gonna throw it on the bench, we're gonna check and see how the PlayStation 5 sits in it, how the controller sits in it. This even has game storage on it too. So I'm really interested to kind of see how everything comes together because where I have this now, I don't have a whole lot of room for storage. And if I can have a charging stand for the controller built into a stand for the system and storage for games, that's gonna declutter my living room a whole lot. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So here we have the Nexago multifunctional cooling stand for P5, much like what they did with their charging stand for the DualSense. They call it the P5 versus PS5. I, I don't understand why. Um, pretty simple and straightforward look on here. It does say on the front, this product does not include a console, game disc, or controller. Um, I hate the fact that they even have to spell that out, but there are stupid people that will say, hey, where's the PS5 that was supposed to come with this charging stand? So uh, nothing really on the sides, but looking on the back. So here you can see it has easy installation, single screw for the PS5 uh, disc version and the digital only. And it does offer cooling fans if you so need it. I've never really been a fan of, no pun intended, of cooling fans for systems. Uh, easy charge dock here on the side and storage for 11 different games. Product package size down below you can see, checking out the specifications, it's 9.6 by 1.18 by 9.06 inches. So not too terribly big, but significant enough size. So let's go ahead and we'll open this up. I'm having to use my not so nice exacto knife because Tom from uh, Gaming Off The Grid, I'm sorry, Do You Nerd has stolen mine. Thanks, Tom. Thanks a lot, man. Okay. Kind of has that, that styrofoamy type packaging around here. Uh, set the box aside. Looks like there's a manual inside here. This does have some heft to it, which is good. Uh, it's not going to slip and slide around. Um, kind of looking at the base itself. So you have a, looks like a power button here, USB C standard USB A connector there. You have USB C connectors here, obviously to charge the DualSense controllers. I wonder if I can charge my Switch controllers. We may have to check that out. Uh, slots here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different games. Again, I'm going to try and see if other cartridge or not cartridges. Well, actually, it would be a cartridge case for the Switch to see how that fits in there. Now, this does accept, like they mentioned, both the disc and discless version. It's not adjustable. They've just molded this channel to go ahead and align properly. Um, 
nice metal, metal base, non-slip feet. I like to see that. So all good stuff here so far. So we have a Y harness here with uh, two USB-A and a USB-C. So we'll find out what that's for in a moment. A screw to attach everything to so we can screw our PS5. Ah, see what I did there? And a secondary pigtail and a secondary screw. I'm assuming one is for the digital edition and one is for the disc version, but I don't know why you would necessarily need two sets of pigtails, but okay. I may be able to use this for other projects. So let's check out the manual real quick here. So it walks you through how to go ahead and affix the console. Uh, there are two different versions depending on if you have the disc or the disc free, the digital only version. Uh, you can use this Y harness to plug in to the back. So this will plug into the back of your PS5. And then the other side here plugs into uh, this base for power is what it looks like. Now what this doesn't address is how I go ahead and connect a hard drive. Uh, but we will check and see if that is is an issue or not. Um, walks through the features and everything. So the USB 2.0 on the left side of the stand is mainly used to connect external devices like PS5 headphones, not compatible with USB 3.0 uh, cameras, for example, or other low load devices. Uh, please do not connect the USB 2.0 port to another device when the controllers are being charged. The charging time may be affected since the power source is directly from the PS5 console, okay? Uh, uses a 5 volt 3 amp, wow, that's a lot of power. Um, does this charge to 100%? That's what I want to know. And from there we just get multi-language, so doesn't really address that a whole lot. The buttons are on the left, so, and the controllers are to the front. I would consider this the left side myself, or this side, if you're thinking how the system is sitting in there. This would be the front, and that would be the back, but we'll see. Okay. So they're intending it to go that way. So now we have to prep our PlayStation 5, which means I have to zoom out and you guys are gonna see a lot more of this bench because quite frankly, the PS5 is a monstrosity that is way too big for our own good, but I still like it. So first things first is we have to remove the original stand. Now, one thing too, on this stand here from Nexco, it is designed for your system to stand. It is not designed to work as a lay down. I'm actually gonna flip this up here. And just like that, the original screw is out. So the way the bottom of the PlayStation 5 is contoured, the base will only go on one way, it looks like. And again, this is my disc version. There we go. There we go. That's what my youngest says all the time. There we go. Um, I would say don't crank down on it, just secure it down. Now we're gonna flip over our system. It is held on securely, I do like that. Um, and then for power, we're gonna turn this around. So yeah, if I've gotta plug these two into here, that means my hard drive for my PS4 games needs to now plug into one of the front connectors, which I am not the biggest fan of myself. So now looking at the back, there is actually, again, these ports here too on the back. I forgot that those were there. Actually, I didn't see them. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. Does it say I have to plug the white one into a specific one? Double checking the manual. Does not indicate one has to go one in place and one has to go the other. So there's that. I am gonna try connecting the hard drive there. Uh, but next I wanna just see, you know, the storage here is actually really, really nice. Uh, let's kinda of see how that goes together. All right, so let's check this out. I've grabbed a couple of games from a number of different systems, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and the Switch. So obviously we're gonna start with PS5 and it's kind of a snug fit. I'm gonna actually go down this way just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, does hold them pretty securely, which is nice. So PS5 cases, PS4, same basic thing. How about some Xbox One? These are definitely looser. You can see it kind of flopped over, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna actually pop those out because I don't want them to fall over. Uh, switch cases, I am sure going to be, yeah, kind of flops over there. Can I double up? No, so designed primarily for PS4 and PS5 cases, just to be aware of. We are going to remove these. I wanna see how loud the fans are because that is a concern. Let's check the controller charger now. So does it have to go, looks like it will go this way. So this is something cool about the USB-C charge ports themselves. They can actually pull out and you just leave them 
permanently connected to the controller. Well here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect everything back up to our TV and just kind of see what we're getting for results. I will tell you, my initial fit and finish, I like the disc slots. I like the fact that it will hold the controller here. I am gonna check real quick. I happen to have a third party switch controller just out of curiosity, and this is from Rival Game Labs, I just want to see if this would fit. Nope, not deep enough. Not deep enough. So I have everything initially connected to my Li Pao 15 inch portable monitor because just the way my setup works, it doesn't always come through my TV properly. So it's just the way that it works with HDCP. Um, I do really like the way these connectors mount. Um, I do not have my external hard drive connected right now. So what we're going to do is first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to connect it underneath here. Now, I don't think that it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. So interesting, yep, something is wrong with the extended drive you selected. Try disconnecting it and reconnecting it again. So we will disconnect, reconnect, Settings, we'll go down here. Yep, something is wrong with the extended storage. So I cannot use this port to connect my external hard drive to. That's kind of a bummer. Um, but now one thing I wanna check and see here, so we'll disconnect the drive, pull it aside. Now there is the button on the back here that I told you I thought was an on and off. I think it actually changes the speed. So there's one speed, it's going very quietly even more quietly, more so still, and then off. So you have three speeds and then off using the button back there, which I do like. I do wanna see if I disconnect one of the two USB cables, if the fans will first of all still work. Okay, both fans are still going, so good to note there. Now I wanna check and see if I can plug the DualSense controller back in if it will actually charge. So let's keep an eye on the LEDs. I am not seeing a charge indication here without the second USB plugged in. Let's try it again and plug that in. Or it could be that one cord is specifically for the fans and the other is specifically to charge the controller. Not seeing any change there either. Let's do this. We're gonna put the system to sleep and to rest mode, and that will leave all of our USB ports still powered on and active, uh, so we should be able to charge the uh, DualSense controller. So plug that in. Now it did light up amber there. So we're gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna disconnect the white cable, and let's see if we charge or not. Yes, it did pop on to indicate charging. I'm gonna disconnect the black one and just plug in the white one and see if we still get charging. Sure looks like we're charging there. So that is a good sign. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect our hard drive back up to the second USB port. We're gonna turn the system back on. So far so good. So now let's go up to the settings storage and it is reading my external drive so uh, for my needs what i will probably end up doing is leaving the secondary uh, connector disconnected and because i'm probably not going to use the fans so and i will only have my one controller charging on it if you have to i would definitely say use both ports but since i only have one i can probably get away with using just the single uh, connector type there and be able to go ahead and charge and play and keep everything neat and organized um i do like the overall size design and layout of this i do wish that it had just a single uh, usb port here for charging I understand that they're trying to increase the output coming from the system going to two into one USB port, um, but it's something that for me, this will probably work as is like this. I may even just use a single, I probably will, just a single USB-A to USB-C cable to make that run, and that way I don't have this just hanging out. Speaking of hanging out, I've appreciated you hanging out here, but let's wrap things up. So what do I think of the Nexago multifunctional cooling stand for the PlayStation 5? Well, I will say I do like it better than their 
just standalone charging dock. Um, I know the instructions say once you get to 80% or less on the controller, the orange LED should light up on here. Mine never has. Um, and this still kind of sort of requires its own separate power supply. This, everything is self-contained. It powers right off the system. Now, I don't like the fact that it uses both sets of USB ports on the back for power. For someone like me who has the, you know, the external hard drive to store PlayStation 4 games just until we get the expanded storage for the PS5, I don't like to have this plugged into the front. I want it all back behind the system and clean. Now, like I say, I only have one DualSense controller that um, I will be using with it. It does seem that I can power it off of just one versus both ports. Now, it may eventually overload the circuitry on here over only having one connected, but if I'm only using one controller, I think I'm going to be okay. Uh, I do think that the fans are relatively quiet for what it is. I don't know that I will have the fans on myself a whole lot, but for example, I'm going to turn it on high again right now, and I'm just putting the box here so I can push against the back. I can't hear it. The fans are on the high output now I can hear it. <laughs> the fans are on high output and providing additional cooling into your PlayStation 5. And I can actually feel the airflow coming out the top now, which is pretty neat. I didn't notice that before. For the money, I like the storage features too. You know, having the game options here where you can store up to 11 different game discs for PS4 and 5, because it is the same size case, is nice. Having those adjustable to be able to fit the Xbox Series X, Series S, and Xbox One X, Xbox One S games would be nice. Switch games as well would be nice too. But again, this is designed for the PlayStation 5. I get that. I do also like the little dongle attachments that they utilize, come on you, uh, to plug into the controller that you can basically just plug it in and forget because just throwing this onto your controller just makes it more convenient. Trying to line up the USB-C port, not always the easiest to do, uh, especially if you're in a hurry. This goes ahead, you can leave it permanently attached, leave it on the top here, drop it in, and we are charging. Now, it doesn't work with other controllers either, but again, designed for the PlayStation 5, so something to keep in mind there. Uh, overall, this is something that I do foresee myself uh, using into the future. It will replace my regular stand just because of the additional benefits of being able to use it with the existing or the built-in charging stand on here for the controllers. It just condenses everything down for me. And the fact that I can use it with that one lead the way I have set up versus the two wire harnesses, I think I'm gonna be okay. But these are just my opinions. I wanna know what you think down below in the comment section. I know PlayStation 5s are hard to get a hold of right now. I completely get it. But if you have one, or if you're planning on getting one, would you pick something like this up? Is this something that would be of interest to you? Let me know down in the comments section. Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, leave them down in the comments. You can also email me at rocksodmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at Rocksod Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions. GK. Now, if you did want to pick one of these up, we will have a link down below in our pinned comments to where you can pick one of them up using our Amazon affiliate link. Now, it doesn't save you any money, unfortunately. I do apologize for that. There's nothing we can control, but it does actually help support the channel. Now, if you are looking for other accessories for games, cleaning kits, controllers, all sorts of cool things, make sure you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. The cool thing over there, he does have some discounts available. Promo code ROCKSOLID10 will save you 10% off of most items on the website. And if you earn Castle Cash, that's his rewards program, and redeem it, you can save as well. The more you spend, the more you earn in Castle Cash, and Castle Cash just like cash and no exceptions on that. So pretty cool. Thank you, Ryan, for everything that you do there. And like I mentioned at the top of this video, if you like what you see, if you want to see more, always make sure that you go ahead, hit that subscribe button, that bell notification. That way you are kept informed and up to date on all the different videos that we are working on, such as these right here. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksaw Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more.
You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.